Hello guys, in this video we are going to learn backward recursion method by taking an example of shortest path problem. Here is the outline of my talk. Let us begin with terminology. Consider this shortest path problem. The nodes represent the cities. The arc represents possible path between the cities. The goal is to find the shortest path from node O to node D. Now this is the same example that we have seen in our earlier video. And I am assuming that you have seen my earlier video on forward recursion. Now let us say you are reaching node D. So what are the possible decisions that you have made before reaching node D? Most probably it will be either going from 3 to D or going from 2 to D. The last possible decisions that you have made to reach city D will be part of the stage 1 problem. In the backward recursion, this is how we number. The last stage will be called as stage 0. And then the stage just before stage 0 will be called as stage 1. And these are the decisions that you have made before reaching stage 0. And the last decisions are made from stage number 1. And the stage 1 problem is defined as starting from stage 1 ending in stage 0. That is how we define the stages in backward recursion. Now let us understand some of the notations that will be used in backward recursion. Notice that we have the same notations from forward recursion. However, the definitions are going to be slightly different. In fact, the definition of xi is exactly the same. That is, xi is going to represent possible values of state in stage i. However, there is a difference in the definition of fi xi. fi xi now is defined as follows. It is the objective function value from the end state to xi. Notice the difference. In forward recursion, the definition of fi xi was objective function value from the start state to xi. Now in the backward recursion, the definition is different and it is defined as objective function value from the end state to xi. That's the only difference that you have. Now let us practice these notations by an example. Let us say we are at stage i problem. Now in backward recursion, what are the two stages that will constitute stage i problem? Well, stage i and stage i minus 1. And that's your stage i problem. Let us say i is equal to 3. Now tell me what are the possible values of x3 and x2. Since this is backward recursion, x3 will contain a, B, C and X2 will contain Y and Z. Alright. Now which of these do we know in stage 3 problem? F3 star or F2 star? At this stage we know F2 star and we are interested in finding F3 star. Now what could be a possible relation between F3 star and F2 star? Let us see by an example. F3 star B is the shortest path from the end node to node B, which will be either shortest path from end node to node Z plus distance from B to Z or it can be the shortest path from end node to node Y plus DBY. Therefore, F3 star B can be written like this. To summarize, stage 3 problem can be stated as follows. Given X3 and X3 minus 1, and the information of F3 minus 1 star, find F3 star. And this is the relation between F3 star and F3 minus 1 star. Now, these notations can be generalized as follows. Stage i problem in backward recursion can be described as given xi and xi minus 1, and the information of Fi minus 1 star, find Fi star. And the relation between fi star and fi minus 1 star is here. And this is the recursive relation in backward recursion method. 
And the last stage problem that you are going to solve in backward recursion is stage and problem. So in backward recursion, you start from stage one problem followed by stage two, so on until you solve stage n problem. And stage n problem is defined as follows. Given xn and xn minus one, and the information at fn minus one star, find fn star. Now let us use these notations to solve the shortest path problem. We have the same example from our earlier video. The only difference from the earlier video is we have different numbering for the stages. That is, this stage is called as stage 0, then here you have stage 1, then stage 2, and then stage 3. Now let us focus on our first problem, that is the stage 1 problem. This is a table that we are going to use to solve each stage problem. Notice that this table is slightly different from our previous video table. For the forward recursion, here you had end states and here you had start states. Now in the backward recursion, you have here start states and here the end states. For example, in stage 1 problem, the possible start states are 4 or 5 and the end state is D. Now if you make a decision to go from 4 to D, the objective function value will be 9 units or the shortest path will be 9 units. Similarly, if you go from 5 to D, the shortest path will be 6 units. In this column, we are recording the best objective function value and the corresponding best end state. So starting from 4, the best end state will be node D. And starting from 5, the best end state will be D as well. This table represents stage 1 summary. Now let us solve the stage 2 problem. Stage 2 problem begins with stage 2 and ends in stage 1. Here is the table that we are going to fill for the stage 2 problem. The possible start states are 1, 2 and 3 and possible end states are 4 and 5. Now if we make a decision to go from node 1 to node 4, the objective function value will be 12, which is the current value, plus the previous value, which is 9. So the objective function value from node D up to node 1 will be 12 plus 9. Similarly, you can write all the possible objective function values. Notice that you do not have a path from node 1 to node 5. Therefore, the distance will be infinity. Now starting from node 1, the best possible end state is node 4 and the objective function value is 21 units. Similarly for node 2, the best end state is node 5 and it is the minimum of 8 plus 9 or 9 plus 6. And the same thing is repeated for the last row. This table summarizes the stage 2 problem. Now we move towards stage 3 problem. Stage 3 problem is defined as going from stage 3 to stage 2. And since this is the backward recursion, this is the last problem that we need to solve. What are the possible start and end states for this problem? Well, the possible start state is origin and the possible end states are 1, 2 and 3. Now if we make a decision to go from node O to node 1, the objective function value will be the objective function value up to node 1 plus 7 units. Or you can say 21 plus 7. Similarly, if you make a decision to go from node O to node 2, then the objective function value will be 8 plus 15. And if you go from node O to node 3, the objective function value will be 5 plus 16. To summarize, starting from node O, the best possible end state is node 3 and the optimal objective function value is minimum of these three values. And here is the summary of stage 3 problem. Now in order to find the shortest path from node O to node D, you have to trace the solution. So starting from node O, the best end state is 3. Starting from 3, the best end state is 4. And starting from 4, the best end state is D. Therefore, O34D is the shortest path from origin to destination.
And that is how we solve the shortest path problem using the backward recursion method of dynamic programming. That is all what I have for this video. In the next video, we are going to see some of the applications of dynamic programming.